Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint this lovely hibiscus picture by request using watercolors and a waterproof pen. And I'm using the Poshka acrylic paint pen. You can use any permanent pen that you have, such as a Micron or a Sharpie or a Copic or any sort of uh, permanent ink pen. But I was just trying out this um, acrylic pen just to see how it worked. And the only difference was that you kind of have to shake it up and press the tip down onto your paper to get it going first. I'm starting with the center of my hibiscus, just making um, kind of like a wiggly dotty circle and um, then I'm making the base of each of the petals just by making kind of double lines coming out around the center. Now for each petal it's kind of like a ruffly wavy sort of oblong shape. Now watch how I'm doing this. I'm gonna do about three quarters of the of the petal there and then I'm gonna stop because the petals overlap each other and I'm working in pen and I don't have a pencil guideline so I really don't want to make any mistakes and have any weird lines so I am looking at a photo reference on my computer and I'm keeping my head still I'm just kind of peeking up with my eyes and peeking down to my paper and um, so I don't get skewed or distorted and I'm just sketching what I see rather than sketching basic shapes like I do typically if I am drawing in pencil. And the reference photo I'm working from is by Katrina over at Paint My Photo and I will put a link in the video description so you can find it. Now I'm drawing a couple of leaves right uh, at the top of the flower. Now I used a little artistic license and that's not exactly where the leaves were but I thought it worked a little better visually on my paper here. And I'm going to continue adding a few more leaves to fill up my space. Now the picture that I'm looking at is more of a square orientation and I've got more of a long um, paper here, more of a portrait orientation paper. So I'm going to show you at the end of the video how I fill that in, how I add a stem and just kind of go from my imagination to add um, a pleasing rest of the picture, I guess is the best way to put it. Actually, I uh, do want to apologize for the voiceover. I was uh, live narrating, but I just was not on my game today. And, you know, several times, like right here, I was just kind of talking with my hands and not really doing anything to the picture. And I'm like, oh my word, I'm not making people sit through that. So I decided I'd speed it a little up and speed it a little up, speed it up a little so you could uh, watch it in a more concise manner. I'm using clear water and a soft brush to uh, wet the background, basically wet everything except for the flower. So you're going to go over the leaves with water and the background. You want to be uh, careful not to drag water over the petals. If you do, it's not a big deal. I do in a couple spots, but it does, you know, it is nice if you can be careful and not get the water into the petals because the paint's only going to travel where the paper is wet. The paper I'm using is um, kind of unique. It's a Strathmore Aquarius II, I believe. And the unique thing about this paper is that it's partially um, cotton and it's partially synthetic. So it has the appearance of paper. It feels, it tears like paper, um, but it's a little bit thinner than watercolor paper. As you can see, I don't have it taped down and I'm using a lot of water and it's not buckling. And um, also the the paint tends to sit on top of the paper rather than sinking in, so you get more of a vibrant look from your watercolors. I think you can still get the Aquarius or the Aquarius 2 papers available from Strathmore. Um, I bought it by the sheet many years ago, but I think it's still around. It's kind of a nice compromise between Yupo and your traditional like Arches watercolor paper. You get the best of both worlds. You get those, you get a papery paper, but it's also got that um, a bit of synthetic that you know it doesn't wrinkle it doesn't warp and it you know keeps your colors bright so it's just it's just a fun surface you may love it you may hate it you know but it's something that's fun to try um, and this is one of those parts where I'm not where I wasn't doing anything and I was just kind of talking apparently I'm adding a little Indian or English red both of those reds are very similar uh, very similar to a burnt sienna and you could use that absolutely if that's what you had um, I just was in a huge creative rut and I needed to um, just break away from my normal colors and I want to thank everyone who leaves requests because I had several people this week request a hibiscus and I had a couple people request earlier to paint a hibiscus but I hadn't seen a photo that I wanted to work from um, and I didn't have any there, there ain't no hibiscus is growing in Maine in January, dear. <laughs> that just don't happen. I mean, they barely grow in Maine at all. And uh, I've seen the plants at like the Home Depot and I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. I'm going to have that dead in two days. I'm not even going to bother taking that home. Now I've let it dry, the magic of YouTube. And you can see how the color does shift as it dries, but I still have a nice matte velvety look to the color. I really like that. 
you're going to want to uh, wet one petal at a time. So I'm just doing this uh, big one in the front. Now the reason you don't wet the whole flower is because you want to be able to control where your paint goes. And I'm just using a number six synthetic Aqualon. Um, any like toll painting number six synthetic brush would be very similar. It just, you don't want anything that's going to carry too much water. You want to be able to control it a little bit, especially on this paper. And I've got some kind of, I, I would say alizarin and crimson, but it really looks too fuchsia. It looks almost like an opera, but I'm not sure what the color is actually called in Yarka, but I would say use like a magenta or, um, or quinsicodrone magenta, I think. I know I'm butchering that, but hopefully you can tell the word I'm trying to say. Um, and I'm adding a little cadmium orange. So I am just like going to town with colors I usually don't use. Just, uh, I'm telling you what, I had my wax melter on with um, some like tropical pineapple-y yummy wax melts in it. I had my space heater blasting under my desk and I'm painting a hibiscus with crazy bright colors. I was just like, okay, I've had enough of like sub-zero main January. I need, to, I need to break out of this rut. Now I folded a paper towel and I've just kind of lifted up little stripes of lightness uh, on the petal just to give it kind of that, um, that, oh, kind of light papery look. And um, I'm scraping in some more darker lines with my credit card piece that I just kind of, I just take old expired credit cards and I just chop them up and I keep them in my supply drawer and I use those for whenever I need to. Um, you need to scrape lines into my into my pictures. I really like that color. You can see that it's subtle. I decided to go with a lighter colored hibiscus rather than like one of the bright reds or the bright fuchsias that are more solid toned because I didn't think it'd be as interesting to paint. I like it when a petal has like light, medium, and dark values and you can really see the texture. It's got like a, like a crepe papery texture to it. Here I'm adding like a darker color and if you notice it's underneath where the adjacent petal is overlapping it. So it's on the underside and that's just going to give a little visual depth and a little bit of shadow under that petal. Now I'm turning the paper, obviously, duh. Um, <laughs> I'm wetting the petal that's not touching the one I just did. And the reason for that again, so we don't have our colors bleeding together where we don't want them. And I'm going to repeat the same process I did before. So this time I decided though, I would say, see, it doesn't really matter what colors you start with. I thought I'd start with yellow this time, just for, you know, something different. And then I'm going in with my magenta and um, we'll get some orange in there as we go. So yeah, I was ready for something, uh, something summery. It's nice, it's nice to, when you're in a rut and you can't think of what you want to do, to be able to look at those requests and come up with some really cool ideas. Um, and there, a little orange. And you can see that the petal was wetter on this one, so the color is really flowing. Here, I'm guiding it a little bit with my brush, just kind of dragging it around. Now, if you had any situations where um, you got some green into the petals, you can just use your magenta nice and dark in those areas, and it will just like look like the edge of the petal has a little extra shadow or a little stronger in pigmentation. It's not a big deal, so please don't feel like you have to start over if your background doesn't come out exactly the way you want. A background is is a background. Now I have finished the other petals in the same method, but what I'm doing now, now that that's all dry, I'm just taking a little bit of that magenta watered down and I'm dragging it in from the edges. Anytime there's like an indent on the edge of the flower, I'm dragging in some of that um, magenta or orange, just like a watery wash. And it's going to make it look like those petals kind of have ripples and like crepe paperiness to them. So you just go around there and do as much as you want or as little as you want, or none at all if you don't want any at all. You can also deepen the color. If you've got one petal that's a little bit lighter, like I had there, you can just do a light wash. And also if you have a petal that you didn't really scrape enough into, you can wash over it and then scrape on it too. And if you hear any scratching, scratching in the background, it's not the credit card scraper, it's actually my cat scratching at a scratching post um, right behind me. So, oh, crazy little noises. <laughs> I'm glad this isn't a sponsored video because I can leave the crazy noises in. Now to paint the leaves, it's the same way we did the petals. You simply want to just wet the petal with clear water and you'll notice that it's actually going to liquefy the pigment that you have under there. So if you had any weird blooms or gobs of paint you didn't like, you can actually go in there and smooth it out. Now I'm adding some more of that oxide green. It's either, I really think it's hooker's green, but they do have weird names in the Yarka paint line. So it may be called something like Russian green number 12. I have no idea, um, but it's like a hooker's green. 
and um, I'm adding that close to the flower. And you know, you could use like sap green with a little bit of ultramarine or a little bit of thalo blue or Prussia blue to it if you if you don't have it and you want a more similar color. Now I'm adding some of that uh, cad yellow light or lemon yellow, any sort of like cool yellow. That's a yellow I'm using the whole way through. I think it's cad yellow light because it's so opaque. And then I'm just using my brush to uh, guide it around there a little bit. You feel free to you know go back add some in blot some out until you get it right watercolor is not scary it's not permanent as soon as you put it on the paper you definitely can play in it so you want to just go around and do the same to the other two petals now here's a trick since your paint's going to stay wet a long time when you're working wet into wet and especially if you're working on a paper that's got a lot of sizing or some synthetic elements to it you can actually paint several parts at once so if i wasn't doing a video when i first did those petals i would just grab two petals that were across from each other and paint them at the same time like i'm doing here to these leaves it's uh it saves a lot of time in fact a lot of times when i'm painting i'm impatient and i'll have like four paintings going at once and when one is too wet to work on instead of stopping and drying it I just grab the next painting and I work on that for a bit and I just kind of trade it around. Now I'm just freehanding in a stem and I'm kind of thinking that I need to do something else with the bottom of this picture but I do want to deal with these leaves while the paint is still wet. So I'm dragging out a little bit of shadows and scraping in as normal with my credit card scraper because that's like my favorite my favorite tool and then I'm pulling my stem down a little bit further. Now, pay attention to balance when you're working. You can totally um, freehand, you can totally add things. You don't have to be, um, and you shouldn't be a slave to what your photograph shows you if you're working from a photograph. Feel free to edit, feel free to add, feel free to embellish. You're an artist, it is your right to do that. Um, so I've just added another little leaf here and a little more color. I like to have a lot of color. I like to drip color in and keep it really pure and, you know, really washy and loose. And then after it's dry, I can always go in and add more details. That's me. That might not be a comfortable way to work for you, but I would recommend trying it just to see because you'll never know if it's for you or not until you try. Now, I know the splattering's not for everyone. I really enjoy doing it. I think especially if I feel like one side of the picture is a little too heavy, then, um, I splatter and I think I want to splatter a little bit of yellow into the center of that picture too um, because the center of the flower is yellow and that just kind of looks like that pollen is just kind of coming free there in the middle of the picture and again use your judgment if you don't like the splatters don't do it you may want to do some collage on there you may even want to paint this in your art journal and um, you know add some journaling there or just so over portions of it that's a great thing you can do if you're not happy with a with a bit of a paper a, a piece of a painting just so over that puppy and you know collage something there or write something there no one will know they think you planned it that way you're the artist you're in control it's your picture if you like this please give me a thumbs up and subscribe i do appreciate it please tell your friends share it on pinterest um and hey thanks most of all for watching i do appreciate it until next time happy crafting <laughs>